All right, so we are going to look at lesson eight in unit six, which is the emoji race game. And <clears throat> really the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna analyze the game and figure out what things are happening and how they're happening so that we can really have a game plan for how we're gonna recreate this particular app or this game. So when I run the code, I'm gonna hit play and it tells me that click your button as fast as you can to get the, your emoji to the bottom first. The left player controls the red emoji and the right controls the blue. So when I hit play, it moves on to a new screen. So that's the first thing that we kind of have to start thinking about is, okay, I've got an on event. Um, when I click that play button, it now goes to a new screen and you can see that I have two emoji characters that are now in their starting positions. And when I click the left button, you'll see that on the board, so I've got an onboard event. Uh, when the left button is clicked, it moves the red emoji, and when the right button is clicked, it moves the blue emoji. Now there's some issues with this game, but if I bring the blue emoji down past a certain point, it plays a tone, and then it goes to a new screen that says blue wins. Um, and then I can play again, and it resets the whole system. And again, I can go down, but this time I'll let the red win, so I'll bring the red player down. And we'll see that it goes to a different screen, plays a higher tone, um, it says red wins. But here's where the problem exists. If I click on the right button now um, to bring the blue player down, he's actually moving down the screen and it actually will take you to the blue wins screen. Um, so this is a glitch in the system. Um, right now um, when it does that. So there are some issues. Um, if I reset the whole game and I play it, or if I stay here, I can actually click the right button and it's technically moving the blue emoji down the screen. Um, so it will win eventually. Um, so there, there are some issues with it, um, but it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna deal with those when we get to them, but that's the game. It's gonna have probably four screens. It's got a couple onboard events and it's got an on event for the play button and then to play again, the reset buttons to, to play again. So that's kind of where we're at um, in the game. So those are the things that we need to be thinking about as we analyze um, those. So um, it's gonna now step us through this and we're gonna do that same thing. So the first thing is we're gonna get our start screen up and going. So uh, they've already created a start screen, a game screen, and a win screen. Um, we're gonna go to the start screen and it says we've called it start. We've got a play button. Uh, we wanna update the title. So we're gonna click on this, go into design mode, which we're in, and we can change the title to emoji race and add instructions. So we're gonna add a new label and we'll call this instructions. and we can now put the instructions for this. something like that. So just feel free to add any of the design tweaks that you'd like. We're just gonna keep it pretty basic for right now. Um, and that's it. So we'll run it. It compiles just fine. Uh, right now our play button doesn't work, but we'll add that um, as we go. So next step. It says switch to the game screen. Um, using your planning guide, fix this screen by changing the color of the two emojis and then adding in other design tweaks. So we're gonna go into the game screen. We need to change the color of this. So its ID name is red, which is an interesting name choice, but that's fine. And this ID is called blue, but we need to change the icon color here. So I'm just gonna actually call this red and then we'll just click on this one and change the icon color to blue. And that's really all we need. Run it. Again, the play button still doesn't work. We'll add code here in a bit. Now we're gonna to go to the wind screen. 
and we're going to design it based on our project guide. So um, we kind of skip that part, but we're just going to put it back to the way it looks in the game. So a couple things that it had, had a picture of the emoji um, first. So we'll do this, um, you know, win image. And then the image we're going to choose is an icon. And we're going to just do this guy. Now it didn't actually color this. We'll just leave this black, but then it had blue winds or red winds in that space. So we're going to put a label and I'm actually going to make it two labels. So this is the color uh, label and it's going to say blue or red. So we'll just do blue and then we're going to make this bigger. So we'll increase our uh, font size here. And then we're going to do another label um, that says wins. So this is going to be our win label. And it's just going to say wins. And we're going to bump that font size up. I didn't write down what this one was 37. So I'll make this one 37. And then I need a play again button. So this will be my play again. And we can make this bigger. And increase my text. Let's go 50. Not too big. Perfect. So that looks good. Uh, that's good enough for a windscreen for us for now. Uh, we can't go in between screens yet. We haven't done any coding. Uh, we're just setting up our design. Next thing. Um, so now we're going to uh, look at the code they've given and make some changes to the code they've given. So let's kind of analyze this and then we'll see what tweaks need to be made um, to this. So if you notice, uh, we have an on event. This is our play ID. So again, if you rub over it, you can see that it says ID play. When it's clicked, it's gonna run the start game function. And when we click the replay button, uh, they're calling it replay, which um, we didn't call it that. So we called it the play again button. So we're gonna have to change this to play again button because there's actually no replay button um, for us. It's going to start game. So whatever you name that button, you got to change that. Um, let's look at our onboard event. So if we press the left button on our board, it's going to move the red player and it's going to check to see if the red player has won. And then if we put press the right button on our board, it's going to move the blue player and check to see if the blue player has won. So those are functions that have been written that we're going to have to modify and change. It's given us some comments, which is great to help us out. But let's look here. Um, it says find the start game function. And inside the function, we need to move both of the emoji images to the top of the screen by setting their Y properties to zero. So if you think about the emojis on the game screen, they're called red and blue. And they have a Y property that we're going to set to zero. So they start up in this position here. So to do that, we're just going to move in a set property and we're going to set the red item, the red emoji, because it's called red, its Y property to zero. And we're going to do the exact same thing for blue. So I'm just copying and pasting. I'm going to just change this name to blue and we're going to set it to blue or set to zero. And then we're going to switch to the game screen. So we're going to do a set screen and we want to go to the game screen. So when start game is called upon, which is in these two cases, we want to switch the screen back to game and set these guys back to their tops. So when we run it, we should be able to click play and that works. And now when we click on buttons, nothing happens. It gives us errors because it says that there's some issues there, but the goal is, is we should see that it sets this here and it changes the game. Perfect. 
um, and it works. So let's go to the next one. So this one, uh, we are now dealing with parameters and sending a function with a parameter. So what happens is when we call the move player function, we are sending it a value of red that's now being stored in a variable called player. So that's what's going on with this. So every time you see the word player, you can essentially assume that it means red when you send it into this function using this. Now, if you send it into the same function, but you use the word blue, it now puts the word blue in for the word player, which is great because now we only need one function to control both players rather than two functions, uh, one to control red and one to control blue. So you can use a parameter to make this a more universal function um, that's less specific um, in terms of who it moves. So uh, let's look and see what it says. So instead of a separate function to move the red and blue players, we've created one function that's called move player. It takes the ID of the player image as a parameter and calls it player. So we know that it passes it red or passes it blue depending on the ID of the particular icon that we're moving. It says find where move player is defined. So we've done that. That's right here. This is the function definition. Get the current Y property of the player and save it to a variable called player Y. So we want to get the property of whoever we pass. So we're going to get the property. Now instead of picking red or blue, we're just going to use a variable that stores red or blue, which is player. And we want to get what property? That's right, the Y property. So we're getting the current Y property of the player and storing it here. Now we want to increase that value by 10. That's just a counter pattern. So we're going to say player underscore Y equals player underscore y plus 10. So whatever that value is, currently what's the value? If we said move red player, its current y value is zero. So it's gonna store that into player y. So player y is now zero. And now it's gonna reset player y to zero plus 10. So it increases it by 10. But we need to actually set the property of the player at this point. So this just increases the variable. It does nothing to actually move this. To move it, we have to say, set the new property to this value. So we're gonna set the property. Now again, instead of picking red or blue, we're gonna just use the generic player, which is where that's stored. We're gonna set the Y property, and we're now going to set it to the variable called player Y. And now, it says once you've added your code, test it. So when I run this, I should move into here and now I should be able to push on my right button and my left button to get these guys to move. So left button moves my red, right button moves my blue player. So again, just adding those three lines of code right there. And that's it. So now we want to modify the check win function. So when does an emoji actually win the game? So we want their X position to come way down here, or I'm sorry, their Y position to come all the way down here to around, what, 400 or so? It's right there, it's 400. So if their Y property, remember it's the top left corner, when they get the Y property all the way down here to 400, we want them to say that they're the winner. So we need to get the Y property of a player and assign it to a variable player Y. Well, we've already done that. Um, let's just copy and paste some code. So it's this property, it's this right here. We create a variable called player Y, and then we get the current player's Y value. Now we need to see if it has reached the bottom. So we use an if statement. So we say if, player underscore y is greater than 400. What do we know is true? That somebody's won. Well, who's won? Well, whoever player is, because theirs, their property is the one that's, their y property is the one that's greater than 400. So we need to set the screen to the win screen.
So now let's run it. Now over here, we can actually use, um, they don't actually have watchers over here. So we could use a console log to actually display the Y value of the player, but that's okay. Um, we're just going to move the blue player down and we're going to see what happens if his player is greater than 400. And there it goes. It says blue wins. Let's play again. Let's move this down. Well, it says blue wins again. Well, that's weird. Why does it say blue wins both times? Well, if you go into the win screen, remember we said that blue wins, this is the color label. So we need to change the color label to match whoever this player is. So if their value is greater than 400, we can change to the win screen, but let's also change that color label value. So the text that's in there to what? Well, Remember, what's stored in player? It's either red or blue. So why not just make this player? So let's try this now. So if my red now goes to the bottom, it now says red wins. If I take the blue to the bottom, It says blue wins. Now, here's, here's just a programming tip. I don't want to click all the way down the screen, so I'm just going to make this value like 150. So I don't have to keep clicking down the screen, so I can test this a few more times. There you go, red wins. Play again. Try it again. Good. Now here's where the glitch comes in. So if you look, I'm going to go here and it's going to say red wins. Now I'm going to start clicking on my blue button. So every time I click on my blue button, it's still doing this. It's still running this code because it sees an event. It sees a right button press, so it moves the blue player and it checks the blue player to see if it wins. So if I click check or if I keep check clicking it, it's now going to say blue wins. And if I click red again, it says red wins and back to blue and red and blue and red. So here's the glitch that we saw earlier in our code. It's because it keeps running the code and it keeps checking and it keeps resetting the text right here in the color label to the new player because every time you click it, its value is still greater than 150. So this if statement is still true. It then just changes the color label to red and then back to blue and red and blue and as many times you keep clicking. So really, we need to say that if, hey, if a player is greater than 150 and there's already been a winner, then we're not going to redo this. Okay, so that's a way to fix it. We have to create a variable that stores if there's a winner. So these are now going to be our modifications, but let's see if there's anything else we can do. It says create a variable called player y, assign it to y property, use the console log, or a watcher to watch the value of player Y, decide what value player Y should be uh, to be at the bottom of the screen. We said 400, uh, which is fine. So let's go ahead and finish to the next part. Use a conditional. So that's our if statement. So add an if statement to the bottom of check win. You want to check to see if player Y's value is greater than 350. We did 400. You could do 350, that's fine. Um, so we could just change this to 350 now. Um, in your conditional, add a console log that reports which player won. So we didn't do that, but we could do that. We could put a console log right here, and we could say um, player plus, and then for our message, we could just say wins. So this essentially is going to then say red or blue wins at the bottom. So this is if we didn't do the set property yet, this would allow us to see in our console log when somebody got to the bottom here. 
you can see there it is red wins and it'll say red wins every time I click it and it'll go blue wins if I move my blue player so I'm clicking my right button here eventually my blue will come down now I can actually alternate between blue and red and blue 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 red 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 so my my emojis are actually now way down on the screen they're like way down under here okay um, but then when I hit play again it resets them back to the zero position um, on that it says test your program that it worked so we're gonna finish let's go to the next step it says add a set screen block to change the windscreen we did that it works so we're gonna move on and it says before uh, each call to set screen add a set property block to change the text property of winner to display the actual winner so that's what we did here. Now it says do that before you do set screen. And really you should do that. You should set the screen after you've already changed the text label so it doesn't set it, doesn't change the screen and then adjust your text. You should always adjust your text before you change your screen. So that's a good um, note right there. Again, you could put that up front. Say the player wins, it changes the text and then goes to that. Um, Now a couple things you could do is you could say instead of saying player you could actually do player plus and then you could do wins here. So I want to show you what that looks like um, when you run it now. It's actually going to say like red wins and they'll say wins again because that's a separate label but we can then get rid of that entire label if we wanted to. So watch this. So see how it says red wins and it says wins after, like on top of that? So in our design mode, let's go into our windscreen, we could get rid of this entire label and just call this one, just put winner. And we could center it. And then we could put our text alignment, we could do a center align on that. And that looks good. Now the other thing we could do is we could change the color of this icon to the winner color. So that remember is win image. So if I go back to my code, so not only can I set the label, but now I'm going to set the win image and I'm going to set the icon color to not red or blue, but to what stores red or blue, and that is player. So now when I run it, so blue wins, now if I hit the red button, I can see the difference between red wins and blue wins. You can see those there. All right, let's finish that. So it says add another conditional that checks which player it was. So if the player is red, then it does a high note. Otherwise, it plays a low note. So we could do that. So we could do another conditional inside of this so, so now we know that a player has won, but we don't know which player has won. So we could say if the player is red, then let's play a note, buzzer frequency. So it says if it's red, uh, high note. So we'll make this uh, 1500 and we'll do short. So like 15 milliseconds. And then we can do an else statement. Copy that, paste it, and we'll make a low note. So we'll make this uh, 500. So if the player is red, it plays a high note, it also will play a low note. But again, somebody has to win. So it's this if statement is inside of this if statement right here. Let's try that. So there's my blue wins. Now if I come along, there's my red wins. Okay. So that worked. Finish that. Now it says select one of these below um, and Really, 
so here's the icon color of the winning image that we could change. So did we end up doing that? Yeah, I missed it. Oh yeah, we did see that. Um, you can make them start out sad, change to met, and then uh, end up happy. So again, you could do an if statement. Um, like when you do your check win, you could say if the player is, you know, less than um, 100, then they're sad. Else, if they're less than 200, they're meh. Else, uh, happy. And then they would change their their expression as they go along. Um, you could, it says, use a variable and conditionals to make sure the players can only move their emojis when the game screen is showing. So, this is kind of the important one in my opinion. So I'm going to have a var start game, and I'm going to have it start as false to begin with. So right now, if you click the events, like I don't even have to play, and I like I said, I can go. I'm going to hit my red button a bunch of times here, and it's going to go all the way down, and it's going to let me win. And we didn't even say play. So we don't want these things to happen if the start game is false. We only want them to happen if it's true. So we can now put a control value to say, okay, we can click the left button, but we don't want to move the player or check win until what? Until the start button, start game value is true. So we're going to say if start game and just leave it at that. So let's think about how this works. Currently the value is false. So if I start clicking, it says if false. So the only way it runs this code is if this is true. So right now it's false. So it's not gonna run this code. It'll just let you click and that's it. Now this one will work because I haven't put this in there. So if I want to be able to click or if I want to be able to do this, I need to change start game to true. And where do I want to start, set start game to true? Well, I'm going to set that when I start the game. So when I set the screen to the game screen, I'm going to say start game equals true. And now when I do that, um, actually start game is the name of a function. So that's not good. Um, we'll just call it start. And then we'll say start and we'll say start I should fix it there we go so now we have a start it's false if start so right now it's false so it doesn't let you do this when you click on the play button it will then run the start game function which then sets start to true and I can put another if statement around this guy and move these in here and do the same thing if start now when I run it I'm gonna hit my red button again about 40 times nothing's happening and you're like I don't believe you mr. Wilkins well let's check so let's go into the move player here let's do a console log just to check I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna say I'm going to have a console log player y's value. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to put this as a one. So that's, or I'm just going to make, use the word true. So this one's currently false. This one's true. So there should be a difference here. So again, I'm not playing. I'm going to hit my left button. Look what's happening. You can see my values are increasing. So it's going to let my red win. Okay. Now, if I reset and rerun, now I'm going to push my blue button. Nothing. Red button, blue button, nothing. Again, just to show you that it works, I'm going to change this to, to true as well, as if it weren't there at all. So, here's my red button, and then here's my blue button. See that red button takes over, blue button, red. Again, it picks up where it left off for that particular button until they get to the end. So this right now, when I put this value of start and start and I hit run, I'm pushing buttons and now it's not moving.
Now, if somebody wins, what should happen? Well, we should do the same type of thing. So the only way to win is if start has happened. Now we can do all this. And then what do we want to change the value of start to if we've won the game? So if a player is greater than this, we want to do this right here, but we only want to do it one time. So we're going to now st set start to false. So now it won't do this if the next player gets up there. Or it actually won't let you increase these players' values now. So I'm going to rerun it. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to move this red guy down. Getting some lag. Okay, got some lag there. Let's try it again. All right, so we're going to move blue pretty close. And then we're going to move red to win. So there we go. So if you notice, I'm clicking on red. And remember before, it would do red wins, red wins, red wins. And if I click blue, see how it's not advancing blue? So if you look down in the console log, you'll see that I can't advance blue anymore. When I hit play again, I should now be able to advance them again. So this is a way to kind of fix those issues. You create a variable, and then you don't let it do parts of the code unless that variable is true. Um, so that's how you can kind of modify that. A couple things to finish the modifications of this um, is to now incorporate a couple things, uh, analog sensor in your board, and then the color LEDs in your board. So a really simple way to do that is to right here, when you figure out what player you're picking, have it also use the color um, rings um, on, your, on your person. So you're like, well, I don't have those options here. You're right, you don't. So if you click on Remix, it's going to bring it into your projects folder. And now you have access to every function. So now here's all your color LED functions that you might want. So that's kind of your last step is in here is you want to then add your color features. So if the red player wins, then let's change uh, the colors. Or when somebody wins, we can now change the colors based on the winner. So we could say that this is player. So now when I run this, when it gets to greater than 350 and it does this, it's going to then change the color of LED zero to red or to blue, depending on who wins. Now, how can I make it so that it turns all of them on? Well, I'd use a for loop to iterate through that. So I can go into variable, or I could go into control, and I could pull a for loop. And now I can then go from i is less than 10, or you could do color LEDs dot length, either one, and you could use the i value. Now it's going to turn all of them on to red or to blue. Now, when you hit start game, what do you want those? those LEDs to do. So you want to turn them off. So you want to do the same thing in the start game function now. So you want to create a for loop and you want to turn all those LEDs off. I'm going to let you do that kind of on your own. But it's the same thing. Just copy and paste some code and change this to LEDs off. And now you can turn them off. Now what if you wanted to change the intensity of it based on a light sensor? Well, you could use that as an analog value. Take in the light sensor value and then adjust the intensity level of the color LEDs based on that. Or, um, or do other things uh, with it. So that it's kind of your call on how you want to use those analog sensors um, you know, to adjust. You could even, while your uh, player is moving, instead of adding plus excuse me, plus 10, you could then take a value of the 
microphone and adjust their speed based on the microphone value. So think of a race. If you have a, a huge cheering section, what's that going to spur the racer to do? Well, they might run faster. So you can now increase, instead of increasing it by 10, store the value of the sensor in a variable. So you could do this, and then you could do a get um, sensor value, or you could use the sound sensor value. So you could do an average value over a certain amount of time. So this would be like sound value. And you know, over a hundred millisecond time period, it'll take an average value. And then instead of adding 10, add sound value. Um, I'm going to divide by 20. I don't know what those values are going to come out right off the bat, but we can try it. Like we can do a watch. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's type in. Oh. The reason why sound value is not available is because right now it is a local variable because it was um, defined inside of move player. So to fix that, I'm just going to take it outside of move player. So I'm going to um, copy this line of code. I'm going to move up here and put it at the very beginning with my other variables. And this will make it a global variable. And I'm just going to say it's equal to zero to start with. And then down here, I don't need to use the word var because it's already been defined. I'm just reassigning it. So let's rerun that. So now you can see uh, when I play, it's going to take the sound value average. And right now it's zero. Um, so we might actually, we should probably reset this variable. Um, Every so this is only going to do it inside a move player, so it's not going to give us a long enough uh, average there. So we should probably set that up. Let's do a onboard event um, that's constantly taking a reading. So that would be an accelerometer data value, and now we're going to move this line of code into here. Let's try this. So now we should be getting sound value check, 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 check. Hmm. Let's make this 50. Let's see if that changes anything. Do we get any values now? Check, 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 check. Hmm. So I don't know if that function works. I've actually never used that function. Let's see what it says here. Oh, that's great. So let's get rid of that and let's just do light sensor value. Let's try this. Let's see if we get a value here. Okay, so there we go. We got a light sensor value, but these values are way too, way too big. Okay, you see that there? That's in the 70s. So we want that to be like 7 um, or, you know, 14 at the most. And if you cover the light sensor, it goes down to 0. So let's divide this number by, um, let's do 100. Okay, let's see what that does. So now, oh, wait, this is just the light sensor value. Sorry, we're going to divide this by 10 because it was 70. So now we should be able to, so we move, and if I cover the light sensor, it's barely moving. See that? Now it's open, jumps more. Again, if I slow that, if I put a light sensor on, it, it goes much slower. Again, there it is much faster. So I wonder if I just do that with the sound sensor and not worry about. So I think I'm going to do that. So I think I'm going to get rid of this light sensor value and just use my sound sensor value and not do the average. And 
let's see what we get for values. Okay, so these are way big numbers. So look at my jumps now. My jumps are going to be huge as I go there. So I might want to reset. I might want to change this. So my values were in the like three hundreds. See that three forty. If you blow on it, it'll it'll get really big. Um, so I might divide this by uh, thirty, or maybe even fifty um, when I do this. So that way, if I get a large noise so you can get bigger jumps if you have bigger numbers so I'm in the if it's quiet you get smaller jumps but anyway those are some of the fun things that you can do uh, to adjust your your game um, it'll light up LEDs you're using an analog input you're using digital inputs. You have different um, events that you've created that fire with play and reset buttons. You have different onboard events that are firing. You have a function that's been written that takes a parameter. So this really um, satisfies all the requirements that you have for your game. Now I'd love for you to make some changes to this so it's not strictly the emoji race game. Um, but if this is what it takes to get you um, credit and you can reproduce this, that is wonderful. Have a great day.